Hi everyone, welcome to Elite Code by Elite Contest 84. Oop, what is this? That was from a previous contest. Hmm. I see. In order. Next day. Uh, what? I feel like that's a bad statement. Yeah, that's a bad statement. Hmm. 
can I greedy this? It seems hard. You seem like some sort of greedy. Divided by X. Oh, that was correct. Okay. I kind of half guessed that greedy, so I hope it's actually correct. Uh, it's not 10 minutes yet, so I can't see what my score is yet. But I was kind of slow, and I think this question is really badly worded. It says the minimum of this that must pass after, bef before, but I don't know. I think that's bad wording. But anyway, I'll get to it. Okay, this problem is pretty simple. I'm just going to keep a dictionary and then um, each each key in the dictionary is mapped to the current sum of the elements. Then for each element in the combined list, I will increment the corresponding key in the dictionary to get to the correct key value pairs. In Python, I could have also done like some sort of counter, maybe, and then and then I'm just taking all the keys in increasing order and appending to the answer their key and their corresponding value. That's it. Um, since the numbers are small, we could have just used arrays as well. Okay, this this problem is basically we we notice that j take i not equal to nums j take nums i. If you rearrange that, that becomes i plus nums i not equals to j plus nums. J, sorry, J take nums J, like this, i.e., or, or like we could, like how I've done it in my code, we could do this as well. There's multiple ways to arrange this. But basically we see that for each element, 
if we tr transform it into this expression like I've done here, now we just need to count the number of pairs of not equal elements, which is pretty simple. There's a lot of ways, so once we've reduced, now all I need to count is the number of pairs of L which don't, don't contain the same element. The way I'm doing this is D will be a frequency hash map. Then for each position, I'll iterate through L, and D will keep like the frequencies of all the stuff we've seen in the current prefix so far. When we get to our current element, we have to increase the answer by the position subtracts di. And that's because pos will be the number of elements before our current element, and di will be the number of elements we've seen so far which are equal to our current element. So the difference will just be the number of elements which are not equal, and then we'll just update the frequency hash map. It's pretty simple. Uh, this question is, I think it's even easier. Basically, for we'll just store a dictionary d where dx is like the last, the the last day which we completed a task of the xth type. Um, then what for each task, our day has to be at least at least one more than the previous day, and it also has to be at least this in order to have enough space. This is where I think it's controversial because I think the wording. Um, makes you want to do this, but if you look at the examples, you do have to plus one. By space equals three, they mean like three days strictly in between, whereas the way I view three days after that one, you're allowed to do it is, if you were able to do it on day one, then you should be able to do it on day four. But according to their rules, you, have, you, you need to have three complete days without doing it, so it would be day five. I, I don't know if any of what I just said just makes sense, but... Anyway, I, I don't like the wording of this problem, but it's pretty simple. We calculate the day for each task, and then we'll update um, our dictionary. So like dx equals to the last day we do x task. Um, yeah. Okay. Finally, let's do the last question. Okay, so the minimum number of operations is basically just um, minimizing the length of the resultant array, they are equivalent statements. If we minimize the number of operations, we're going to minimize the total length. Okay. Now here's where I thought of, okay. We're going to process our, our array from right to left. Let's have a scenario. Maybe like these are the last two elements of our array. Well, we definitely don't want to split the 10 because splitting the 10 would never be optimal. We will just be limiting ourselves uh, in the prefix. So we don't want to split the 10. If six is less than 10, then we don't want to split the six. There's no, there's no point in splitting the six. If this was a five, we don't want to split the five. If this was a six, we don't want to split the six. But now let's consider what happens if this element was like, I don't know, 12 or something. In this case, we do need to split the 12 since um, once we've split this 12, both the elements must be at most 6. In this case, it's pretty obvious what to do, and you just do 6-6. Six, six. But let's say we have something like 13-6. Maybe it's not so obvious what we have to do now. Well, it's not possible to split 13 into two elements, both of which are at most 6. So ideally, we remember, we want to split this 13 into as few elements as possible in order to minimize the number of operations. But we can't split this 13 into two elements. So it's optimal to split it into three elements. If we were to split it into any more, we would just be, again, we'll be leaving ourselves with lower values, which would make it worse for the current prefix. So if we were to split 13 into three values, which we can, how is it best, how best to do it optimally? Well, actually, if we want to minimize the element, it's optimal just to split them as equal as possible. So in this case, 13 split into three would be four, four, five we have to put the bigger numbers towards the end to make sure it's still sorted. Now once we split this, we can keep going. For example, if this was a 3, then that's fine. If this was now like a 9, we would have to split this into three threes. If this was a 4, we would have to, we wouldn't be able to do it with one element, so we'd have to do it with two. So splitting 4 in, as equally into two piles as we can, we'll give 2, 2. And so on and so forth until we've um, visited the whole array and done all the operations. Okay, so now for the implementation, x will just be like, x is pretty much just the um, the, sm the smallest number that we've seen in the current suffix, i.e. 
all the numbers from now on have to be at most x in order to maintain the non-decreasing order. So initially x will just be the last element of the array, and then every time we split an upper, every time we split a number or process a number, we might have to update x if it's smaller. Because for example, here x would be 5, but once we've processed this 4, then all of these elements must be at most 4. No. Okay, so the first case is when our current element is already smaller than x. In this case, we don't we can't perform any operations. Well, we can, but we wouldn't want to. And then we simply update x. The second case is where we have to split um, split our current value. So for example, if like nums i equals 13 and x equals 6, um, then I would choose m equals 3. Here, m represents the number of elements I'm splitting the current value into. And yeah, basically the formula is just m equals the ceiling of the num side divided by x. It, it should be pretty straightforward. We can't get less than this. And yeah, so that, and this, you could write this, but in order to avoid um, precision errors, it's better just to write this. Then we not need to increment the number of operations. The number of operations will just be the current number of elements we split into, subtract one. And then finally we'll update x. Um, this will be the smallest element once we split it into m groups as e equally as possible. And then we return the answer, and that's it. Okay, let's check our standings. Okay, that's very nice. It looks looks like I've won, so um, that should be good for my rating. And yeah, hopefully this good streak will continue. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time, and bye.